I've spent a couple of days uh, this last week trimming and assembling uh, resin figures for the Dreamstone and this is approximately half of it now, I'm about halfway through, um, uh, which is one of the reasons why I don't offer <laughs> Uh, pre-assembled figures. Um, in this case I've made an exception because uh, with the Dreamstone these are as much um, ornaments, figurines for people who like the show as they are um, gaming pieces for people who are interested in the hobby. Uh, so though I hope many people will go on to paint their miniatures um, and to play the games that are associated with them, I appreciate that some people just want them as figures and aren't interested in um, you know, the, the hobby aspects uh, of it, so I've, I've offered these as, as assembled um, pieces. Uh, I do keep coming back to the idea of offering uh, pre-painted uh, miniatures for the woods, um, and maybe we'll talk about that in a, in a future video, but not, not just yet. But I thought I would use this opportunity to wade into um, another of the great debates. <laughs> so a few weeks ago uh, I talked a bit about um, analog sculpting versus digital sculpting. Um, here's another debate that goes hand in hand, resin figures or metal figures. Um, ordinarily, of course, uh, most of our figures are metal with the exception of the big um, trolls and so forth, uh, which are in resin purely for practical purposes. Uh, if you put you know, big things, uh, we did a, uh, for example, the, the Ethworm, um, we did a limited run of 30 of those in lead um, and uh, it's so heavy and so awkward to pin uh, to assemble it and um, it tore the mould to shreds uh, and uh, big things involve splitting up into multiple parts and putting, you know, arranging in different moulds and taking up lots of moulds. Um, so big things, obviously it makes a lot of sense to have them in, in resin, but typically um, we'll go with uh, with metal. And, and why is that? Well, firstly, it's because personally, I like the aesthetic of uh, of metal models uh, in terms of I would rather see a bare... Um, have I got anything bare metal? A few bare metal things on the shelf up now. I've, I've, I've pre-painted, um, primed at least most of them, but a few metal things. Uh, I much prefer the look of a blank metal figure to a blank resin figure. Secondly, I like the weight of a metal figure. If I'm moving it around on the battlefield, I like to you know, feel something. I remember the first time that I went into a games workshop uh, and I think they had a Mordheim table on the board and I'd, I'd not been in for ages and I was expecting to pick up the Skaven and be like, oh yeah, feel the weight of the metal and it just went, whoops, oh, it's all plastic. Uh, yuck. <laughs> um, to say, it just it, it, a, a metal thing to me feels like a sculpture. Whereas a plastic or a resin thing to me feels like a toy. So that I, th I think that's the kind of the, the difference in my brain. But that, that's, that's obviously a very personal and once it's painted, largely subjective issue. Um, so let's have a look at some of, the, some of the other issues. Some people say that resin figures get you a much greater level of detail than metal figures. Now, I would dispute this. Um, if, if you are ever in the Birmingham area and you want to go and check out some of the stuff that Griffin um, moulds are producing in, uh, in metal, every bit as precise uh, as, as resin. And the same is true for the casters that we use. Um, the, the models will be as good as the sculpt uh, that it's coming from. Um, I think where this has originated is that back in the old days of Games Workshop casting in metal, sometimes the guys in the mould room weren't necessarily specialist mold makers, specialist casters, or they were learning on the job. And so some of the results were a bit soft uh, around the edges, not quite as precise. Also, they were using quite high lead content um, uh, metals, whereas now very low metal, uh, very low lead content. There's about, I don't know, think three or four percent um, in the miniatures that we get a lead content. Most of it is tin and that gives you a much harder, much crisper um, when um, Games Workshop switched to white metal, which is a similar thing, very um, substitutes the lead out for something else. It's very uh, high strength um, alloy, um, in, in miniature terms anyway. Um, you get much crisper details, uh, the, the, the less lead that there is in there. So that's one reason. Um, the second reason that people think that you get more detail in a resin sculpt is because, or a resin figure is because the grey or black or white or whatever colour it is, but it's normally grey, sort of 
non-reflective surface of resin lets you see up details much more clearly than the shiny kind of polished look of a metal figure. So metal figures quite often you have to undercoat or um, at least wash them with a black ink or something before you can see the details in them, whereas a resin model you can just see the details in its natural form. So that's one of the reasons people think that you get more detail. Um, another reason though is that um, it's much easier to cast in resin. You know, it, the, the setup costs are way lower um, than getting a vulcanizer and a, a spin caster. Um, you can get a, a compressor in a vacuum chamber or a, a pressure pot um, and you can be away playing with uh, with resin. So in terms of people casting their own figures and doing it in, in um, their garden sheds, resin is much easier to get into. Um, it's also uh, a lot easier to get good results. You have to really know what you're doing when you're spinning uh, metal, get the temperature right, get the speed right, get the amount you're pouring in right, get the design of the mold right. Uh, resin is much more forgiving, so it's easier to get good quality castings in resin than it is in metal, but that doesn't mean it's impossible to get them in metal. Um, so next reason uh, why I prefer um, to use metal uh, is this. This box here is all of the sprue offcuts from these models here, and you can see it's quite quite a heft. There's quite a big quite a big box here, um, and these are necessary bits of resin casting. You need to have a big channel so that you've got the weight of the resin pushing down, and a, a reservoir so that when the air is pulled out, you can get more resin um, in uh, uh, into the the mold cavity. Um, but these you can do nothing with. I've seen some casters who um, mould these into the shapes of uh, ruined walls and things, and that's fine, great, you can use them as terrain pieces, but mostly they're, they're solid blocks of rectangular resin, sometimes with a name uh, inscribed on it, and they're not recyclable, they're not reusable, they're going straight into landfill, and this is all oil, so it's not, you know, it's not biodegrading anytime soon. Um, this is all, all essentially waste. This, on the other hand, this is a bag of um, broken and uh, overstocked and um, out of production uh, lead metal castings from Oakbound. And this is going straight back to the casters and it's gonna be melted down again and turned into more current figures and uh, you know, hopefully not broken figures. So there is no wastage in a metal um, model. All of it is going back in. I almost never get bits of sprue because it's not in the caster's interest to send me bits of sprue, they can put them back in the pot um, and melt them down and use them again. So this is a zero wastage. Um, also, obviously it's a, an old, <laughs> old, well, metal casting is an old uh, ancient art form. Um, spin casting lead is not so ancient, but it is still, you know, it's still um, probably about a century, maybe. Yeah, maybe about a century old, maybe a bit older than that. So, you know, it's it's still traditional. Um, and uh, it comes from uh, sort of natural sources. Now, obviously we don't have that many tin and lead mines uh, in the UK anymore. So this isn't a slight issue with the metal. Um, sometimes it can come from Indonesia um, where they have um, children and uh, convicts in mines. So there is a bit of a, a sustainability issue uh, in that sense. Um, it would obviously be better if we could sort of regulate the, the conditions under which this is sourced. That would push the metal price up, I would, I'm sure, but mm. is it worth it for, for knowing that you don't, you're not buying into child labour with your, with your metal figures? Um, but all of this resin, this is plastic based, this is non-renewable sources, um, so you know, there's a sustainability and a, an ethical issue uh, with that as well. There are, however, uh, some benefits to resin. Resin is a lot easier to glue and keep it glued. Uh, just a dab of super glue will fix your resin model without the need to pin um, and, and use epoxy like with the, uh, with the metal figures or solder them back together if you're good at soldering. Um, bent resin bits or resin bits that you want to reshape. Um, you can hold them over steam and you can flex them and you can bend them into different 
uh, shapes. You try and do that too often with a lead figure and it will snap. Um, if you've got big armies, a resin army is going to weigh a lot less. However, um, if they get knocked over on the tabletop, they're much easier to snap than the, uh, than the lead uh, metal models, apart from possibly thin spears and things, but you can usually get away with slightly bending them and then bending them back um, with metal. Um, so there are, there are advantages to using resin, but I find for gaming, if you dropped a, a resin model off the table, it would smash. And yes, it's, it's easier to glue it back together, but I'd rather it didn't smash in the first place and metal will do that. But metal will chip a bit easier. Yeah, with resin, um, you need to wash it to get rid of um, release agent and um, leftover residue from the mold. But you can you can paint it pretty much straight from the resin, whereas metal you need to prime it thoroughly beforehand. Although I have painted straight from the metal and it's been fine, and um, it is more prone to chipping. So uh, there are pros and cons to both of them. I'm not saying resin is bad, evil. Never using resin. Obviously, I'm using resin. The reason I'm using resin for these is partly because the, some of these are a lot bigger figures, so the resin makes sense. Um, they're also uh, a bit more dynamically posed in some cases and you can cut the mold lines for for, um, uh, for silicon molds for resin um, much more easily than you can cut them for metal. It is possible to get uh, dynamic um, uh, dynamic figures in single pieces in metal but it's much harder uh, and less reliable than it is in, in silicon and I wanted these to be um, single piece wherever possible to avoid uh, too much assembly. Um, uh, and also the weight issue, if you're you know, ordering a full range of these in this size that's going to be a heavy box to post, whereas in resin they're quite lightweight. Um, so, so that's why I decided to go with, uh, with resin for these guys. Also things like the, there's a big nose on this guy. This guy, because of where his feet are, has to be placed in a mould this way. And you can see that big nose and that big tail there. Um, or maybe you can't see, but there's a big nose and a big tail there. It would be hard to reliably to get those to form um, in metal. And when you pull them out of the metal mold, um, it, you'd be likely to get some tearing on the mold uh, as well. So it, it's more forgiving to put them in um, in a mold for resin. So I don't hate resin. I think as uh, if I were just paint things for display. I think I'd probably like resin because it'd be less weight on my shelves, um, less work to prep the model for painting, um, I'd be able to see the details straight off as soon as I bought the figure, they'd be easier to assemble, uh, so yeah, I, I think I would go with, with resin, but as a gamer, um, when I'm moving stuff around on the tabletop, I, I like to have, uh, to have lead metal, but let me know uh, what you think um what's your what's your preferences for your army um so next week i'm going to be uh, starting a series um revisiting how to play the woods hopefully leading up to actually getting some games in fingers crossed we're able to get some games in soon um but certainly revisiting that series that i did a couple of years ago um and updating them for for second edition uh, so do join me uh, for those anything else that you'd like to see as always drop me a line um, and I hope you're picking up our uh, newsletter, the, um, the second part of the um, series for the Woods on Votive Offerings uh, is, is out now. So do sign up for our newsletter if you want to uh, take a look at that. Um, stay safe in the meantime, and I will see you next week.